Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zachabine101 and welcome to this Raiders playthrough. Well, not really a playthrough, but this is a boss fight between me and Fleetfoot. And right now I am showing you the armor I am using. This armor you can get right at the end of the tutorial island or pirate island, whatever you would like to call it. Considering it's not really an island, it's still attached to the main area of the game. But other than that, I am wearing the gear that you get at the end of the island. As well as the sword I am using is exactly the same as the uh, the weapon that you get at the end of the game. Or not the end of the game, the end of the tutorial island as well. It's a, it's a green pioneer sword, the one-handed sword. I'm not using a two-handed sword. I'm not using a shield, but I am a defender. Uh, I'm level 10. I beat the guy in a test run at level 9 and then ended up leveling up. And I went, oops. But whatever. Um, but all the skills here you can get without actually being level 10. You can get them at level 9, so it's not really like it's uh, a big deal. But anyway, if you don't know what Raiders is, it's a massive multiplayer online role-playing game. Very similar to that of Terra and Guild Wars. Uh, it is a free-to-play game, so you guys can pick it up right now and go play it as well. Um, but defenders usually plays, played with a shield, but I have been playing the entire game without a shield because I feel like they're completely useless in the game. So I prefer just using invincibility frames like in Dark Souls to be as awesome as possible. So this is Fleetfoot. You're not supposed to be fighting him alone. Even the quest states that you should be playing against him as a party member or with party members. Um, after the first test run, uh, which I didn't die in, surprisingly, it was very close though. I had like 100 hit points left. And my test run um, but anyway uh, I was with a party and the party members were all dying at the end of the fight I was like wow I, I only got hit twice so uh, playing this way really made it a lot more interesting I felt like I was doing a lot more uh, damage than everyone else especially since everyone else had to had to resurrect and waste their uh, novice scrolls of uh, resurrection or something whatever those are called um, but as you can see without your shield you can do everything in the game as a defender would be able to, you can shield bash, you can do all the uh, normal abilities, of course. Instead of the shield bashing, though, you just hit them with your arm. Uh, and if you need to block, which I never do, because there's no point in blocking, especially when you don't have a shield. Um, but if you... You can still block. You can block with your sword. I mean, so you still get access to everything here. Um, but usually I just don't go ahead and do that. Um, but anyway, Fleetfoot is a very easy, easy boss to fight, I found, uh, which is why I beat him on the first test run. He only has a few sets of, a uh, few set of moves. Um, he's really not that challenging, uh, especially when they added the red glow to his, uh, to his spinning attack. Actually, that wasn't in the game, I believe, in the closed beta, but they added it in the closed beta there. And as you can see, I got hit. I'm not impervious. I, I sometimes get hit, and the reason I get hit usually is because I use too many abilities at the time, and then I and then I don't have enough stamina to roll, which is the number one thing. Um, I was just playing this a little bit more aggressively. I was trying to take him down as fast as possible, really, because this fight is ridiculously long. It felt like a half an hour fight in my test run and this one it turned out it was only about 17 minutes but the other one felt really really long um, so hence why I am using the pioneer sword which is probably the best weapon you can use at this stage which is a one-handed sword uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure it's the best weapon for this level uh, unless it's a level 10 one that I don't know about um, but again I'm just using the sword uh, so this fight is doable without actually uh, even getting a shield. You don't need a shield, which I'm pretty much proving here. I have, I've played the entire game up to this point without a shield. Um, but of course, there's going to be bosses later on, but maybe you probably want a shield, but I'm going to try and play the whole game with that one, um, just because I like to go against my odds and play the game a little bit differently. Also, because I've been watching a lot of Sword Art Online, I don't know if you guys have ever been watching, I've ever heard of that anime, but if you haven't, you, I definitely recommend it. This is an MMO, and Sword Art Online is a is an MMO based in 2022, and you guys should definitely go check that out. My character is kind of in the style of the main character of that game, so that's probably why I decided not to go for a shield. So again, that's still relevant, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, 
Yeah, so this boss is really easy. If you just keep going around to the right of him or to the left of him, he won't be able to hit you with anything. Um, all you have to do is wait for him to do an attack and then hit him. That's all you have to do. Every enemy is exactly the same in this game, I found. Um, where if you just get behind them and wait for them to do their attack, they are completely open. Uh, and there's another time where I got hit again because I was a little bit foolish. used way too many abilities at once and didn't have enough stamina to roll out of the way, which gives you the invincibility frames, which is extremely important. If you need those invincibility frames, if you don't, you're dead. You're, you're going to get owned by this guy. This guy will destroy you. He will eat your soul, and he will rip your heart out, and he won't even care. It doesn't matter if this is the beginning of the fight or the end of the fight. He acts exactly the same through the whole fight. He's identical. He doesn't. It's not like Monster Hunter where you're fighting a Rathalos, and as you're wearing the Rathalos down, he either gets really pissed off at you, starts huffing and puffing, and beating the shit out of you because you've been hitting him so much. And then at the end of the fight, he's been so worn down that he's dragging himself around the map. He's not even able to cast fireballs anymore because he's just been so wounded uh, that he needs to get out of the area and go to a new place. And in a game like Raiders, which is an MMO, they can't really do that. Actually, this area is very limited. It's not multiple areas like in Monster Hunter, of course, um, for this specific fight because it is an instance battle. So I guess you can't really have a monster retreat. However, that would be kind of impossible either way because that means you have to have all these players that are chasing Fleetfoot in the other world, the uh, the world where all the players are in it, uh, not just a party, uh, which would be an incident anyway. But in the in the other world, the one where everyone's playing in it, you wouldn't want a monster running from one area to the next. I think that would be a little bit impossible or really annoying and irritating for players to go ahead and try and get that to happen. Uh, but again, that is the limitations to MMORPGs. Uh, however, I would have uh, liked to have seen more moves by Fleet Foot. I would have liked to have seen him be worn down as he got to really low health. Um, but unfortunately, he just does the same thing over and over again until he gets to around 25% health. And you'll see that where he just summons three of his wolves. And in my test run, the wolves really scared me. I was like, how am I, gonna, how am I ever going to do damage to him if I have all these wolves here? And I actually thought that if the, the wolves get spawned, that yeah, once you kill them, they'll just get respawned again. However, that didn't seem to be the case. When I accidentally killed the last dog, I killed two of them, and the, I left the last one alive, but I kept hitting him by accident whenever I went for Fleet Foot. So I ended up killing him, and I thought my life was going to be over, because he's going to summon three more dogs, I was at 100 health, uh, and my life was almost ending. Um, because I did, I, I, I strictly made it so I couldn't use any potions. Um, as you can see, though, I am using my own skill, which allows me to get health back. So what, one of the nice things about Defender, I didn't even realize Defender had that ability, but it made the game way easier the moment I got it. Uh, it made this boss fight like three times as easy than uh, it originally was going to be. Um, however, it's just... It's just how the game plays out. Once you know all the moves of your, your opponent, especially when it's as easy as Fleet Foot, you're probably going to be okay. Um, but you have to be a little bit careful because if you take him too lightly, he will kick your ass and your life will be over. Uh, so you have, to treat him, you have to treat this game when you're fighting bosses like this one-on-one, -on -one, which are, are not supposed to be versed one-on-one, -on -one, especially at level 10. Uh, I believe Total Biscuit went up against him at level 15 and got his ass whooped. He got uh, his ass whooped, man. It was hilarious. Um, but, yeah. Uh, you're not supposed to fight this boss at level 10. It was just kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, maybe kind of like how in Dark Souls you would uh, go through the game as your lowest level possible. Except for when you play this game, you can not You can probably get here uh, without leveling. But I don't know how that would work exactly. Uh, being a completely new character. I don't even know if you can leave the beginning island uh, before you finish it. Um, so that was uh, that was the only thing. Like I couldn't really be a lower level. Again, I said I was level 9 when I fought him in my own instance and I, and I got enough experience from him to level to level 10 and I was like, oh, well, that kind of sucks. I really wanted to show off the fight at level 9, my lowest level I possibly could be uh, to fight Fleet Foot. But, uh, oh well, it's not really the biggest issue uh, in the world. 
Um, also, you may be wondering why am I not speeding up the fight. Uh, the only reason I'm not speeding up the fight is because I don't want sh people to think that there's some sort of uh, creative editing going on. Um, this happens a lot in Dark Souls playthroughs as well. It even happened in episode 1 of my series because I was just trying to speed up the, the video. Uh, but I did mention I died. Uh, however, uh, a lot of people will edit the video as if, uh, you know, they, they soloed it, you know, and never got hit by it, or, uh, you know, do a whole playthrough of uh, the fight uh, and, and, like, seamlessly cut and edit the video together uh, to where the character is in, you know, the exact same spot and all the enemies are in the exact same spot or whatever, uh, and, and the person could just edit it. So, if he died, and came back to the fight, you know, he could, uh, he could go ahead and just continue the fight from there and pretend like nothing actually happened. Uh, but yeah, I don't do that. So I wanted you guys see, to see the whole fight. Uh, anyway, here you see that the, the dogs are here and they can be a little bit of a pain. Um, they're not really hard to evade, but they make it very hard to go back and start fighting Fleetfoot again. So you see me just continuing my same routine of just going around in a circle uh, to get around Fleetfoot uh, and do whatever damage I can and if I hit the the, the other wolves and that's fine uh, it's not really a big deal considering the the wolves are pretty weak actually uh, it would be pretty cool though to see Fleetfoot uh, whenever he does a spin attack or any of his attacks uh, it would be really cool to see him actually hurt uh, his ally wolves like you would see in Monster Hunter whenever a um, like say, again, like a Rathian or a Rathalos, whenever they do the tail whip, you can actually see them hitting other monsters and it's doing damage. Um, honestly, that would be very cool to see uh, and have in a game such as Raiders. It would probably really improve the experience to have uh, enemies uh, able to hit other enemies even if they are technically allies. Uh, of course, there is situations where wolves uh, will go ahead and start eating like livestock and stuff like that in the game, which is pretty cool. Uh, I do like that. I want to see more of that in the game, of course. Uh, even though the game is officially released, and I'm sure there's a lot of new updates that are going to be coming out. Uh, of currently, I think the Thanksgiving update is out right now, so uh, people can go and experience that. The Halloween update was kind of cool. You got to wear a costume, but unfortunately the costume disappears after seven days or whatever uh, when the... Halloween um, update ended and that's kind of one thing I didn't really like about it uh, I, I wish that uh, it was kind of like Final Fantasy 11 where you can you can see who's been playing the game the longest by who has the most festival items uh, for every year in summer uh, and winter they would have these different um, things that you could do where you would get clothes for your character to wear and they would all be different each year so it'd be cool if Raiders did the same thing and you got to keep the items on you um, because then you could show them off to the people that unfortunately weren't there at the time so it would be neat to see that happen don't know if any of the Raiders viewers or uh, creators will ever watch this video I kind of highly doubt it uh, but yeah, that's just my my two cents. Especially since this boss fight's going on very long, that's kind of why I went on that tangent. Because, damn, it takes forever to kill Fleetfoot alone. He again, he's not a hard boss. I actually stay pretty close to full health through the entire fight. I think there was only one time in the fight where I dropped maybe to 800 or 600 health, but never below half health. So, again. If you take uh, time and care with the fight, you can probably easily take him down without getting hit once. Although, since the fight takes so long, it's really hard not to get hit uh, at least once during the entire fight. Again, this fight took about 15 minutes to complete. About 15 minutes, people. <laughs> this is a ridiculously long fight. And Again, it clearly, you're supposed to be fighting this thing with like three other level 10s with you. Uh, and even that takes about five minutes to kill the guys, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. Do you want to see more boss fights against Fleetfoot? And maybe uh, tell me what other bosses you want to see. So here is the last hits to kill the boss.
So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the boss fight for Fleetfoot. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below what next boss you want to see. Or if no one posts, posts, his, posts what they want to see next, well, I may just do the spider next, because that's the next boss anyway, so, yeah. Other than that, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys also incorporate this strategy of not using a shield. Become a shield, to become a non-shield bro today, and you will be a total epic badass, of course. So, without further ado, here's a little bit of jigging, and this quest is now over. I will see you guys in the next episode.